Hey there, beloved Ascension Pioneers. Today is such a great day. Today is a day for revelations, for inner discoveries, for re-emerging. <laughs> well, I have published on Facebook that I finally feel that I have shifted back within me to my true self. And these challenges that I've been experiencing lately have been pushing me, you know, propelling me towards, you know, connecting to my soul on an even deeper level and move all that excess energy, all that is not of me, all that is of the old, which is of the past, remembrance of the what was, you know, instead of being in what is. And these are the things we're going through right now. These are major shifts. And um, I've even talked about it with several people yesterday, also several people who are guides, and they all speak about the same thing. You know, I have this image, like, and I knew, I felt this intuitively that this half of the year that was occurring on solstice and especially was triggered already by the transit of Venus, I saw this, you know, curve, you know, like a U, you know, um, curve. And it actually showed that, you know, we were, we were moving deeper and deeper into our shadow aspect, into our human aspect. And then from there, you know, rising upwards. And I feel this deepest bottom point of the valley was now during the solstice week. And um, that's why many who are also guides said that they, they felt the same shift that was very intense. And I've never felt as intense things, you know, and I'll speak about it a little later on. Well, I will focus on relationship and communication in relationships. And um, right now, I just want to make a short intro. First of all, I want to say that I still want to thank so many of you who are watching my videos, not just tuning in, but also sharing your words of gratitude. This means so much to me because you have to know this as I share my journey, like a friend just said yesterday, when you share a journey, it's so much easier for me to walk my own. That's why I'm here. You know, I'm so honored to be with all of you sharing because I feel this as a privilege and I'm very blessed to have uh, chosen this work of service. It's not even a work. It's my passion. I love interacting with all of you. And especially now, I don't receive so many questions like I used to, you know, people sharing their personal stories with me. I just feel that more and more of you are really shifting into your true empowerment and that makes me feel so happy. <laughs> it's not like I don't like to receive questions from you. It's that I'm really proud of all of you and your inner journey and I know that I'm here to share. I cannot teach anyone anything. I can just share my own experiences and that's why I love that about what I do is I don't just show my um, you know highest aspects, highest peaks. I also show my valleys to all of you, so you can more authentically know that this is what is happening. Because so many teachers only focus on the positive, and this is like I say, the way of the new age, which is of the old. Because what is now resurfacing really needs to be dealt with. It really is some of the old that we might have thought was already gone. But for me, what was my main challenge was trust, you know, self-trust, because, you know, I was always this way. I always knew about things. I always had that strong inner knowing. So when I was at my deepest low right now during this week, when I kind of fall into that state of sadness, because it's like my old self was dying. It's like I was grieving that old self. And even others said, yeah, it's the grieving of the old self. And even though not all answers for the new came, you know, we were practicing silence and um, just allowing things to come in their own divine pace. <clears throat> so the thing is, I always had this strong inner knowing, but now in this fall, you know, I've been asking myself, you know, in my bed and meditation, I was saying, you know, how come I don't have all these gifts? I don't see, I don't hear, I don't, um, I'm not like some people who are channels, but I know things, but it's so hard for me to not see and then still have to trust, see? But that is the path of the, that is more, um, it's even more difficult because all that you feel, you feel internally. You don't have the external senses like uh, inner sight or uh, outer sight or whatever. You know, I do observe outer signs, but some people who have their clairvoyance skills very developed and I don't have that hearing, things like that. And I said to myself, then why don't I have that? It's so difficult for me to always trust that inner gut feeling and that inner knowing. That's the thing. That's the deepest initiation. When you are a type of a soul, when you just have to really always rely on your inner knowing, you have to know that is the deepest initiation you can go through because you will always be so blessed when you will trust that. And the moment that we really realize that it's all about that self-confidence in yourself, although we all had bad experiences in the past that made us doubt ourselves. And I'll read the short text right now, what this is about. And We've all had these experiences which made us fall a bit from our grace, from a natural state when we really trust in that flow and that we are a part of that flow eternally. So 
what was happening for me, I always had this channel of just knowing things. And usually, you know, even for other people, I could know, I could sense things that are, you know, that would happen, but I didn't have any proof. I just felt, you know, this is not going to go like that, probably going to go like that. And lately, I've been receiving these confirmations when I notice things about others and, you know, old people from my old past life. And I see these things are now really starting to happen. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I really am like psychic, but not like psychics, you know what I mean? It's like, I have such strong inner knowing that when I get this confirmation it's like how can I how can I not even trust myself how can I ever doubt but we do because of that human part which I was speaking about yesterday which needs to be embraced not fought over you know it's not about fighting that shadow aspect I had this email today coming from someone who really um, expressed their feelings of um, how uh, anxious they are, how difficult it is for them to move through the lower emotions such as hate, things like that. And they're so aware of it, but still it doesn't go away. And they're kind of frustrated about it. Why doesn't it just go away? They've been trying to fight it or things like that. That's exactly what it is. That's why I've been focusing so much in my videos these um, past uh, week about embracing our shadow, embracing our human nature, really going to the depths of all the, our parts you know we are so much more than just our human part but we need to embrace this part as well if we don't we're never going to remember our wholeness because healing is actually holing it's to remember we are already whole and move back shift back into that state so it's not about denying that it really is not about denying it's to look for like i say new implementations new ways to really impl um, implement new methods, new ways of seeing, but we have to do that through experiencing things. You know, that's why I always go through the experience and that's how I can authentically share with all of you as well. It's not coming from the, you know, the mind because like I say, so many of us know so much about these spiritual truths, but it's not enough. It's 1% then you have to live it and you have to know how to embody it, how to bring it in awareness, through awareness and into your body into all the levels because sometimes we might feel oh we, we've done with this patterning we've done with that but you know all the levels have to be uh, whole again and sometimes we're not aware of all the levels so for me like i said to return what i was speaking about it was about trust and when we don't trust it's always about our own trust in the divine because our own divine connection means if we don't trust it we don't trust in the divine that is one and the same so we don't trust that the source is always supporting all life and all creation and we are part of it so it doesn't support us that's what we believe when we fall from that trust and i'll read the short paragraph here it's from guidance book from the oracle cards of doreen it's healing with the angels it's from doreen virtue and it says about trust believe in yourself and have faith that god and the angels are with you ask them to help you lose the fears that block you from enjoying full faith and a lot of people who now speak about these things i've notice a beautiful brother of light who makes awesome videos he said I, I still don't have that unfavoring faith i still have these doubts and these experiences happened to to him that were very difficult and he said i never wanted to experience that again it's so hard that's why i don't have this unwavering faith in the divine but these challenging experiences happen exactly for that in order for us to go through it and become the alchemist that we are and see that we do hold all the power when we are really residing in our true self with a capital S confidence because whatever we do we have to jump into it just jump into it and trust because when we jump into it you see literally literally all the pieces become whole as we jump you know so that I know this is still part of my intro and the relationship part will, will follow just bear with me be patient the paragraph that is very important for right now is your angels know that you've been disappointed in the past like all of us you know went through these old things that were of the very much lower. These experiences may have eroded your faith in yourself, other people, or even God. However, the angels remind you of the importance of holding on to your faith. So angels emphasize the value of self-trust. They know that you, like everyone, have made mistakes. You know, there's no mistakes, but it's how we perceive them. In the past, however, these mistakes um, not have not eroded your true nature. You still have omnipresent God within you, and God is infallible. The angels ask you to trust in God and to trust in them, means in you, because we're a part of that God team, godliness. They will help you to trust yourself. So ask your own presence for that trust. And, you know, also, I, I need to read you, before finishing this uh, intro part, this beautiful paragraph, which I um, read today from Sonia Francis, she's an astrologer coach. And again, it has to do with when we are in these states, how do we really discern between what is coming from the fear state and what is coming from the love state? Because, you know, when we fall, um, when we move into the spiral, 
that has to deal with the past, you know, all is one. But when we are, we literally are like retrograde. That's why sometimes when we fall in the old, we think, oh my God, the old is repeating again. I went backwards again. You know, I'm not moving forwards. We feel like we're not moving forwards, but this is an illusion because we perceive it because we're residing in the fear and the fear is the past. Fear is that past wounded core that makes us feel that the old is repeating, but actually it's just coming up to the surface. So we're not literally retrograding, we're moving back. Like the planets, you know, that are retrograding, they just apparently are retrograding, but in fact, they're not moving backwards because nothing is ever moving backwards because the universe is not linear. But we, from our standpoint, you know, from, from our viewpoint here on Earth, it appears that they're moving backwards, that they're retrograding. That's where these movements that are happening within the planetary shifts are happening within us as well. So it's all about the apparent things, you know. So when we might get into a situation that some of the old might resurface, we might feel, oh my God, the past is repeating itself all over again. It literally is not, but you've been given an opportunity to shift into the new and you feel, oh my God, I'm stuck in the past again. I'm not making any progress. It just feels that way. But remember, it's always a spiral. So you just come to a certain point of the spiral that you might think you're moving backwards, but you're always moving up. You just come into a certain point when a new level is being presented to you, when these patterns that you might have still holding, you know, still holding you back from your true nature, from your true self, feel of the old. That's why you feel like you're retrograding back. And you have to deal with them, you know, and if you won't, just keep repeating and repeating like that person wrote, you know, I just can't handle this. That's you get to embrace it. It doesn't always make so much sense if I just say embrace it. But truly, all we have to do is allow the divine to work through us. And we want to complicate things. We want to learn about methods and, you know, healing modalities. But in truth, all we have to do is connect to our divine source nature and say, I give up. I allow source and the divine will to now flow through me and allow it. I allow to uh, for my true self to be presented to me, that I truly can feel my true self. Okay, so how to discern between these, what is of the heart, what is of the mind? I will read you this paragraph now. It says, check in with yourself to see if you're coming from love or fear. If you're coming from fear, your body feels tight and there is a sense that you need to rush something or it has an obsessive component. When you come from love, your body is relaxed and you feel grounded in what you do. No rushing is required. If you notice that you're coming from fear, let it be okay and simply breathe into your heart center. Expand, oh, by the way, this is the heart. <laughs> Expand the heart, relax your body and quieten the mind. And then it says, as best as you can, seek to be gentle and kind with yourself and others. We all have flaws, wounds, insecurities. The more we can open up to that being okay for ourselves, <clears throat> the less judgmental we will be with others. This is also a great time to recognize that our so-called flaws and insecurities have become one of our best assets and strengths. What is your biggest inner asset? So I have this metaphor that my friend mentioned yesterday, and it's like, we are reaching for in a di inner diamond and you know how they find diamonds. They literally go in the dirt and they have to dig really deep in the dark in order to excavate the diamond that is beautiful and shining. That's what we're doing right now. We have to move into that U spiral to the lowest low and then transcend and fully lift off again. You know, like we're like bone collectors. We, we literally collect all that which was dense before. And we alchemize it and bring it back up. That's what we're doing. And when we do it for ourselves, we, we ripple out. We, we let the energy reverberate for all others and all other parts of creation as well. Because when we make ourselves whole again, we have that put outwardly, you know, to express it. Okay, enough about the intro, which was, by the way, almost 14 minutes long. I'm sorry for that. But I guess all the things had to be said because everything is always in divine timing. But why I want to focus on relationships, you know, because in these times, what is being triggered within us can be done the most in a most rapid way through relationships, because relationships are a mirror. And sometimes, you know, just being with only ourself, we cannot have all of that, which is still flawed or insecure or wounded. We cannot have that resurface so much easier. That's why we have these divine helpers through our intimate relationships, you know. I have it with my mom and with my beloved, and sometimes they're really intense experiences, but they're very much needed. Like I said, it's not always comfortable and pleasant what we're going through, but it's very much needed. So I will share my experience. I will share my example. But also, before starting, I would like to say that a relationship, every relationship is always a mirror. You know, it's always 
what is happening within you and what's happening with that person is always mirroring this aspect of yourself. It doesn't have to be the same thing that you're experiencing, the other is experiencing. Although there are certain relationships like twin flame reunions that are literally mirroring yourself 100% back at you. Not all relationships have that capability because it's not the same energy. But when you are within the most intense relationship that is really bringing the 100% of you, it's so intense. That's why a lot of people report uh, on twin flame runnings, like runners. <laughs> they get scared because it's too intense for them because they have not integrated enough love energy yet in order for them to move through these challenges. But these challenges are there to illuminate the truth, um, you know, illuminate and therefore the truth to be presented and to be embodied. So why is communication so important? Because all the aspects, not just within us right now, the planetary are showing us that this communication is moving from the old and from the assumptions and, you know, we're, we're making our own conclusions and judgments and really thinking, oh, it's all going to be the same, you know, again. We are moving into a way of new communication. It's like before starting, I would like to read you this part just uh, four basic sentences about relationships that are like the essential part of every relationship. It's like, you know, these divine truths that are true for every relationship, no matter what its nature. It says, it's from Elizabeth Petrinovich, and it says, if something comes up between the two of you, talk about it in that moment. Remember that what you're feeling is about you. Remember that what the other person is feeling is about them. Remember that what you're feeling, the other person is also feeling. So let me get to the interesting part. Let me share my experience and my example. Uh, ever since my awakening began, there was no such person who could really trigger me into that state of, because I was awakening so much to my inner divine love. And there was no such person who held the capability to trigger me into feeling ever sad again, or these lower feelings, you know, that were of the wound itself, that of course I gathered before the awakening, because also I had a difficult relationship that of was very much needed for my awakening and I thought it was fine you know I thought oh my god I don't have any of this anymore that's what I thought but ever since meeting my love I really am being surprised each and every time and seeing how much of that of the old can still resurface that's why I always say all that was repressed suppressed is now coming back to surface in order to be made whole again so here's the thing when you encounter a certain person who can be your 100% mirror, which is a rare thing right now, but it is, it can be so. It has to be the same energy, the, the equal awareness, and because literally what you will feel, they will feel, and it will be so intense because, you know, one has to shift, the both have to shift, both have to shift, you know, it's not just about the one or the other, it's all interconnected. And this is how great union that is being so much spoken of is being presented to us, what it actually means, what it actually is. And how the divine feminine and the masculine aspects between us are merging through that. So the thing is, I thought, oh, you know, I was fine. I really have, you know, I was always the one who was fine, always the sunshiny type. And nothing could ever get to me or hurt me. But, you know, uh, ever since meeting my beloved, I guess there were some old wounded cores that had to resurface. And what happened was there were these strange events that were not even about us. They were about these things that just kept happening with the communication from the external, you know, with the messages and the phones and everything, just, we just couldn't connect. It was so funny Either I wasn't getting his messages, he wasn't getting mine. It's like the great stage was being set, you know, we're all players. And then the universe set the stage because these things had to happen in order to trigger that within us, to trigger that within me, to trigger that within him so that we could both deal with that individually through ourselves first and then together and move back into union. So all these old insecurities, for instance, I realized, you know, um, I acknowledged that before because of these old wounds that probably still influenced that past side of me, which was the mind side, really had an effect into making me build this wall, this partial wall. It was not like a wall you build where you're totally into ego and uh, lack of love, but it was a tiny partial wall that, you know, kind of said to me, okay, you won't go into a relationship with 100% intimacy and trust because just in case something bad happens, you want to keep that, you know, just in case kind of mode. So you will be um, preserved in this bubble that will protect you because ego thinks they protect you. But in fact, it self-sabotages you. So you think you're protected, but you're not because that doesn't serve you in, in, at all. So you build this thing and you say, you know, just if something bad happens, you won't hurt as much as you would go into it completely open. But it's exactly the opposite. If you do, if you have your pure heart open and you go into it with a full heart and complete openness, you don't get hurt. You know, that's what our mind thinks. And also there's another aspect 
of this why communication is so important because you know things that were happening between us were about communication but it was about something you know these outer events that were external of, in nature but in fact we were not external just you know they were not just external they were like setting a stage but beneath it there was this depth that was letting us know about something so we had to figure out whether this was um for us to you know, move further into our communication due to that external <laughs> situation that were causing miscommunication. It was not about us being, you know, making mistakes or, you know, being the way other one wouldn't want to. It was about the external conditions that didn't allow us, you know. So then we went into these fear modes and thinking, oh my God, what happened? What is this? What is that? And the mind was just mind boggling. It was so intense. So whatever we feel, we still feel for a reason. It's there inside us and we need to heal it. And why is the communication so important? Because first, we need to have a solid communication with ourselves. Like I say, listen, ask, listen, and then really wait, patiently wait what needs to come through you. Discern, is it coming from fear? Is it coming from love? I notice this, if it's from the mind, it will keep telling me things like blah, 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 you know, 100 things at once. And I, I don't know, I don't feel divine. So I know it's the mind, so I just let it go. I, I, I observe it consciously, I don't push it. You know, I, I don't push it away. I don't fight my mind. You know, like my friend said the other day when we talked, he said, no one can literally kill the ego. Everyone's like, I, I kind of removed my ego, you know, in the new age, they're like, they want to remove the ego. But in fact, ego is a very limited term anyway. There's not just such a thing as an ego, you know, like Alan Watts said, either you know yourself and you don't. That is the simple approach into seeing things as they truly are in truth. But if you look at it from a more complex nature, like I say, truth is simple, but also complex. If you look at it from that point of view, you will see that there's not such a thing as an ego. Like you have many higher selves, you also have many lower selves. So if I say I had, you know, I'm sometimes going to ego, or then you have this other person who's totally in the old, that means into uh, those um, very low emotions such as jealousy, possession, dominance, control. I don't have this, for instance, you know. And if someone has that, that, that is not the same level of ego that I have when I fall into my sadness and, you know, mind thinking and being hurt and feeling wounded and insecure. It's not the same level of the low. So you have also many lower selves. We're so multidimensional. So just speaking of ego is so limiting. People, I would really like for you to think about the word ego and try to replace it with something else because it's not that simple. It truly is not all the same. That's why, you know, people, when someone says to them ego, they become afraid of it because the energy has such a bad tune to it, you know, such a bad sound to it. And it's true, it sounds awful because some people who are in ego are really making mean things to others sometimes, you know, and it's not all the same. So that's why I would say it's the lower states of you and not all of us have the lowest of the lows but we still have some of that lower states because i say we're multidimensional we have all these aspects and we're kind of like diving deep and collecting them so, so we can bring them up again like light does light the sense into the shadow in order to illuminate it to illuminate whatever it's still dark so communication is so important because you first need to build that strong trust and communication with your own divine self in order to really know how to communicate with another and relationships are always going to show you all your deepest aspects, all your deepest shadows, everything. And so many people are not able to handle it yet. It's too intense and they'll run or move away. They'll move away from each other. And the moment you start doing that and not communicating in that moment, you will keep moving away and away from each other in a, in a, in a time frame a certain time frame. you will build a wall strong enough in order that you two won't be able to break it apart because it will always, it will already be dense enough to become its, entire own identity you know energetic structure so our thoughts our thoughts are so powerful and everything what we do we create so if we fuse it with the fear constantly we'll create this dense thing and it will be like i said difficult to shatter again it's not so much about shattering it's not so much about denying or killing killing the ego killing the brick wall it's about embracing everything through love and really go into yourself and always know that whatever it is that you're pondering about that you're still experiencing is about you so many people still say it's about another it's about another but like my beloved always says every relationship will always mirror to you back something about you whether it's still some of your conscious or unconscious beliefs or um whatever wounds you still might have, it doesn't matter. It still is so that our external reality will always mirror what is internal. So the more that we internalize this freedom of love and not fear, we will move into relationships that are of harmony and union and 
everyone speaks so much about moving into union, but so little people actually know what this is because you have to go through experience. For instance, uh, it's the same with feminine and masculine principle. What is divine feminine? What is divine masculine? So many people speak about this, but what our concept of this means can only come through experience. My friend said the other day when we talked, he said, no one actually knows what the divine masculine looks like. You know, I have a feeling it's like a heart and a spine together, but no one actually knows because it's still so much resurfacing and integrating in the whole of humanity. And it's true. So it's not just so much in having this limited perception of what something might look like because that is of the old, but truly let the divine show all these through us and allow ourselves the experience to go through it because the divine is in the experience. The divine is in that collecting of that and, you know, merging it fully and becoming, like I say, we are alchemists. So communication, 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 and that trust. Please don't allow yourselves to have that mistrust because, you know, even if you do, it's not about denying it, you know, it's admitting to yourself, I still have that unwithering faith, like that friend said, or um, I don't have complete trust in myself. It's about admitting it. But don't fall into it. Don't, don't attach to it. Just observe it. Whatever comes, it's about remaining observant and trying to figure out new strategies, new techniques. You know, not techniques as healing modalities. Okay, if you're guided to, but I'm speaking of something different here. I'm speaking of new approaches which have to be implemented. And um, it really will take for us to shift in our the way that we physically operate here in this realm. Because, like I say... No matter how much aware and light you are in the realms that you also coexist. But when you move into the physical, sometimes, you know, you're like enthusiastic. You know, I want to help. I want to help. I want to assist in this plane. And you come here and you realize, ooh, this is a very dense place. It's not all about love. And then you have to relearn how it is to become master, not just up there, which is very um, much obvious to you already, but you have to master yourself in this physical dance reality as well. And when you learn the principles of how energy works, of how things really um, work in the physical, the creation principles in that physical realm, you actually can manage to flow through life with much more ease. You don't go so much, you know, push backwards and forwards and go so much astray, but you move forward you know in a way that like i say that strong self-esteem and confidence just taking that leap of faith and just jump and no matter what anyone else thinks remain true to yourself because there is no such thing as a bad decision there's only a decision and whatever what you made of it what you make of it that's all there is whatever it will be it just is and what you make of it is what matters not whether you don't um choose the right thing because there is no such thing so it's about taking a leap of faith and jump and start swimming. It's time to, to really start doing these jumps because otherwise we can just conceptualize about everything and nothing will ever change. But we have to become really brave and start doing these things in the physical. Okay. Anyway, um, I know maybe this seems like this uh, video was too long or you didn't talk so much about communication. But I wanted to kind of have a grasp on the broader picture because um, I really integrated a lot of the things lately. So I think I might add a, a few things that were not just about communication and relationships. But know that whatever is happening right now and observe your relationships is really showing you what is happening with you internally. Because remember, the shift is an internal process. It's not so much about the outer apocalypse. It's about inner unveiling, which is the inner apocalypse. And both is one. You know, like a drop is an ocean. The ocean is a drop. It's all the same. It's the micro and the macro merging together. And as the earth is moving in her own inner shift, we are moving along with her. And through all of this, we are not actually becoming enlightened because in, in like I say, in consciousness, we already are. We exist in that seed state and that potential behind presence that we all have because this is how we were all created. But it is about unburdening of all that is not of that. So healing is actually holding because you're not, damaged you already are whole but you are getting rid of all those dense layers and things and ah, uh, you know and you're remembering beneath it is my diamond shiny crystal so i have to move to that deepest level of the deepest low in order to truly collect my crystal and it's time to recollect okay anyway beloveds i'll talk to you soon <laughs> take care Bye bye